Hi designers, in this video I'll show you how to take a portrait and create a stylized pop art portrait combining the styles of two famous artists, Andy Warhol, who was known for making these prints of Marilyn Monroe, and Roy Lichtenstein, who is known for his large scale paintings of comic strips. You'll need a high resolution image from the internet, and once you've saved that to your desktop and opened it in Photoshop, the first thing that you need to do is resize resize the image, go up to image, image size, change the resolution to 72, make sure constrained proportions is checked, and change the width to 1000. The height will change uh, depending on the size of your photograph and that's just fine. Also if your image is color, mine happens to be black and white, you can go ahead and desaturate your image using your preferred method. Uh, I still prefer image adjustments black and white. If you ever see any of these grayed out, it might have something to do with your color mode. So go up to image mode and check that it's in RGB color. You can also use command shift U to desaturate. And since my image is already black and white, I'm going to use brightness con and contrast to create a high key image. And what that term means is that all of the values are in the upper range of the value scale. So there's a lot of white and there's a lot of light grays. So I'm going to lighten up the brightness and up the contrast just a little bit to make sure I don't lose my blacks and click OK. And the reason for this that we want a high key image is that the halftone only makes the image darker. So you want to make sure that your image is very uh, light, has a lot of light grays and a lot of white in it. Um, if your portrait has a darker skin tone, you can go ahead and lighten that up. That's not going to change the way they look because you're going to end up adding the color uh, back in later. The next step is to duplicate the layer. So go over to your layers panel and click control and click on the layer, duplicate layer. And you're going to name this layer, I could have done it in the image window, um, but I can also do it by double clicking on the name here. Sometimes you have to do a slow double click and you're going to rename this layer halftone. Once you've done that, it's re you're ready to select the figure. Um, and we could use our selection tools. You're quite a pro at that, but I want to show you an advanced technique using the quick mask method. Down here at the bottom of your toolbar is the quick mask button. And what this allows you to do is to quickly select something um, and create a mask. And we'll get into masks more la later, but for right now you just need to know it's another method for creating a selection. Make sure your foreground and background color are set to black and white respectively. This is the default in Photoshop, so you can also click D on your keyboard to reset that. And then you can either use the brush tool or the pencil tool to trace along the outline of your figure. And as you trace along, you don't have to be as careful as when you use your selection tools because Andy Warhol just used a smooth selection. You don't have to get every single detail. But notice I'm going all around the inside of the figure instead of around the outside of the figure, making sure I get all of Judy Garland here. All right, so now I've created the edge, and now I'm going to fill in my selection using the paint bucket. And this red that you're seeing is the mask that we're creating. Um, so that's what, that's what you're seeing. You're not filling it in pink. You're not filling it in red. It's creating a mask um, that's easy to see through. Once you've selected your figure, you're ready to use the mask to make the selection. So you're going to press Q on your keyboard. And you can see it masked off or, or it protected the figure. And what it did is select the area around it. And we want to get rid of that background, so we're just going to hit delete. And you can see over here in the image thumbnail, it has now deleted um, the background around uh, the figure. And what that is going to create is a solid background what, like what Andy Warhol used in his prints of Marilyn Monroe. Now we're ready to apply the halftone. So make sure that you deselect, otherwise Photoshop is going to want to apply the halftone only to the area that you've selected. So press Command D on your keyboard and go up to your filter menu and choose Sketch Halftone Pattern. 
All right, if you see uh, a color come up like this, you might not have your, uh, your default color set. So make sure that your default is black as a foreground color and white as the background color. Um, or you can also press D on your keyboard to reset that and go back up to filter, sketch, halftone pattern. And now you're going to adjust the halftone pattern according to what looks good for your image. You're going to want to see a full range of values created by these halftone dots. And this is the method that Roy Lichtenstein used. He actually borrowed it from uh, newspaper printing, and newspapers are still printed this way today. Depending on your image, you might go somewhere between two or four. It just depends on how large you want the dots to look. Also, you can adjust the contrast. You can see if you turn it down, it's going to create a darker image. If you turn it up, you're going to have a lighter image. I like mine right about there. So now we have the halftone image, but it looks kind of fuzzy or kind of gray. So we need to apply another filter, which is sharpen. So go up to filter, sharpen, and then we're going to use smart sharpen. And this removes a specific type of blur called a Gaussian blur. Um, and I would recommend you slide this all the way up to 500% with a radius of one pixel. But you can also see in here in the preview what it will look like. Um, so you can adjust that if you need to to make your image look, look good. All right, so now we've got our halftone going. Um, that looks very much like the uh, Roy Lichtenstein half tone that he used on his very large paintings. Um, and now we're ready to add the color. So we're going to change the mode of the half tone layer to multiply in the layers panel. And again, what multiply does is it takes all those values that are in the half tone layer and uh, multiplies them or makes the next layer down darker in those areas. Then we're going to create a new layer. You can go up to your layer menu and select layer, new layer, or right down here in your layers panel, you have a button for that, and drag the layer underneath the halftone layer, and you're going to name this layer color. Use your paint bucket tool to color in the whole thing a very bright color. And I'm going to choose this bright pink. It's actually more of a red violet. Next, you're going to use your pencil tool or your brush tool to color in the various areas of the face, um, the shirt, the lips, the eyes, the hair, whatever features that you have on your portrait. For a skin tone, a lot of skin tones are yellowish or uh, orangish, actually. So I'm going to create an orangish skin tone. Choose a dull, light orange here. But you'll notice if we look back at Andy Warhol's work, he didn't always use a realistic skin tone. So feel free to be creative and use whatever colors you feel go together. And the idea of this portrait is not to be realistic, it's to maybe be a little garish to really show off the colors. I mean, you might notice this color is not applying very heavily or very fully, um, and that's because the opacity of my brush is turned down to 53%. So I want to turn that all the way up. I also noticed my brush was rather soft, had a rather soft edge, so I'm going to turn the hardness all the way back up. There we go, that's much better. So fill that in. Remember, if your tool is not doing what you expect it to do, you should look first in the options bar to see if there's something wrong with the options. It could be the mode is not set correctly, it could be the opacity, it could be the brush um, itself. So you can try different things there. So you're going to continue on choosing whatever colors you want to use for the, the various parts of your portrait. You can change the, the brush size. You can actually go outside of uh, the halftone pattern if you'd like. Andy Warhol did this kind of thing on purpose. He, when he lined up his prints, he wasn't using Photoshop. He was actually printing, uh, silk screen printing these layers on top of each other. He would purposely misalign um, the layers of color um, in order to just draw more attention to uh, what he was doing and to make it look even more garish or to, to call your attention to the fact that of his process that it had been printed and not painted. 
So just an interesting background for you there. All right, if you take a look at my finished one here, um, I've colored in the hair, I've colored in the background, um, I've colored in the shirt. Make sure you add white for any areas of teeth or the whites of the eyes. Um, if it's a woman, you can add Marilyn Monroe type makeup. I have a hard time believing Judy Garland would ever wear makeup like this, but it's a pop art portrait, so uh, there we go. If you chose a, a guy, um, you can do something a little more subtle, because um, obviously a guy would not wear, wear makeup this garish. Um, the last thing that you need to check, you can see here in this one the halftone pattern was applied to the background. And that's not what I want. So if you still have this halftone pattern on your background, just use your eraser tool. Make sure that your opacity is up at 100, your flow is up at 100, and you can just erase the halftone in the background here. Because again, Andy Warhol did not use half uh, halftone in the background, and that solid background really creates the contrast with the rest of the portrait. So I hope you have fun making a brightly colored uh, pop art portrait.